हेलो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन द चैप्टर माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज प्लांट डिजीजेस एंड देयर पैथोजेंस सो लाइक एनिमल्स प्लांट्स आल्सो गेट इन्फेक्टेड बाय डिफरेंट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन द फील्ड मेनी माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स कॉज डिजीजेस mostly the cereal plants and the fruit bearing plants they are affected by different types of microbes for example paddy wheat vegetables like potato then sugar cane sugar yielding plant then orange and many other citrus fruit apple even the fiber yielding plant cotton so all the types of plants may get infected by different types of microorganisms while they are in the field the crop diseases are mainly transmitted through following three media they may be seed borne or air borne or soil borne in the following table we can see some examples of the plant diseases at first there are two rust and smart disease of wheat these are fungal diseases which affect the stem and leaf portions of the plant severely as you can see due to rust and smart the internal tissues of the plants get completely spoiled therefore uh, being cereals these plants give less productivity less yield if they are infected by these diseases these are spread very easily through air and through infected seeds or diseased seeds therefore before sowing of uh, before sowing the seeds in the crop field treatment of infected seeds or diseased seeds is very important which is called seed treatment here we can see due to rust there is appearance of brown colored lesions or spots on the leaves and due to smart also there is there are symptoms which are very very much clearly seen on the surface next it is the blast disease of paddy it's also a fungal disease transmitted through air or rain in this the seed bearing part or the inflorescence get completely destroyed in the paddy field paddy plant next it is the canker disease of citrus fruits citrus fruits are citrus fruit is a category of fruits within which there is orange lemon okay citrus canker is also a very damaging disease and there is a, there are appearance of brown colored lesions on the surface of the fruit and leaves is an airborne disease as you can see brown colored lesions on the surface of the fruit this is called citrus canker next mosaic disease mosaic disease it's the yellow bean mosaic appear or infect the plant bindi it's a viral disease and spread through insect in yellow vein mosaic you can see a specialized pattern appear on the surface of the leaf and the leaf becomes yellowish okay so these are few examples of plant diseases 
from your lesson. So how we can reduce the plant diseases? Because plant diseases reduce the crop yield in the field. So the precautions to control the plant diseases are as follows. Number one precaution, the farmers has to the farmers have to show or sow disease resistant varieties of seeds which can be uh, they have to be very much careful about this disease resistant varieties they have to bring disease resistant varieties of seeds also they have to treat the seeds before sowing which is called seed treatment it is very important and finally, after sowing, spraying pesticides on the plants. Pesticides are the chemicals which include fungicide, insecticide and they kill the growth of the fungus or other pests in the plant. So these are the precautions and the control measures to reduce plant diseases so till here we are done with the plant and animal diseases now we will move to our next topic nitrogen fixation in the plants the molecular nitrogen from air cannot be utilized by the living organisms therefore the process of conversion of free atmospheric nitrogen into useful nitrogen compounds is known as nitrogen fixation. So the constant flow of nitrogen in the atmosphere through nitrogen fixation and the process of denitrification overall is known as nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle in nature is very important because nitrogen element is the major component of protein both plant protein and animal protein and as we know protein is the building block of our body protein is the body building nutrients for our body in the previous classes we have read about symbiotic bacteria present in the nodules of the roots of leguminous plants these can directly convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates let's see how we can define nitrogen fixation the process of conversion of free atmospheric nitrogen into useful nitrogen compounds is called fixation of nitrogen or nitrogen fixation there are two ways of this fixation natural way and artificial way First we will start with natural fixation of nitrogen. Here again there are two ways of natural fixation of nitrogen into the soil. First is by the symbiotic organism that is bacteria. In the previous classes we have read about this that certain plants such as peas, beans, pulses etc. which are called leguminous plants have the bacterium genus rhizobium on the nodules of their roots. Bacterium as you know it is a singular term for bacteria. So the bacterium genus rhizobium can take up atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into soluble nitrate form in the soil. Nitrates are soluble form so easily absorbed by plants. Nitrates get mixed up with the soil after decay of leguminous plants. Nitrogen or elemental nitrogen can also be fixed into the soil by atmospheric method that is during lightning. During rain when lightning strikes nitrogen and oxygen of the air react to form nitric acid. Nitric acid which is a component of acid rain as well. This nitric acid comes down to the earth with rainwater and reacts with limestone 
in the soil to form nitrate compounds. So please pay attention. The nitric acid which is formed due to the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen of the air using the lightning energy. This nitric acid comes down to the soil along with rainwater and then reacts with limestone present in the soil. So nitric acid and limestone after reacting produce nitrate compounds. These nitrate compounds are then absorbed by plants through their root hairs and help them in protein synthesis process. Therefore these two are the natural method of nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen can also be supplied to the soil by artificial process. For example, many nitrogenous fertilizers like ammonium nitrate, urea, calcium cyanamide and many other are thus good source of nitrogen to the soil. These fertilizers provide nitrogen to plants and plants convert this into protein. So artificially by supplying fertilizers, nitrogen can also be fixed into the soil. Now let us see how nitrogen or atmospheric nitrogen is cycled in the nature. There are two ways either by symbiotic bacteria or by electric discharge. As you can see by symbiotic bacteria nitrogenous nitrogen is fixed to the nitrogenous compounds then finally absorbed by the plants and form plant protein. Plant protein converted into animal protein after consuming by the animal and after death and decay finally they convert into ammonium salt in soil. This ammonium salt is converted to nitrites by the nitrifying bacteria. Nitrite then nitrates and again absorbed by the plants or directly absorbed by the plant. So students you are advised to draw this chart, draw this flow chart of nitrogen cycle in nature. So at the end of this topic, your today's homework are these following questions. Go through these questions and try to find out the answers. <laughs>